And welcome again to a short stop to a short stop. Today we're going to talk about experience or gaining knowledge. But how do we do that? When I was playing, uh, we used to go to spring training, and every year we played a lot of different teams, but there was one team in Palm Springs, California, it was the California Angels, where they had their spring training. And there was a man there that was one of their coaches, his name was Coach Weiss. And uh, one day I just got to the ballpark a little bit early in Palm Springs, and I was going to take some early batting practice. And I walked out onto the field and looked over in the other dugout, and there was Coach Weiss over there. And he hollered out. He said, hey, Johnny, come on over here a minute. And I walked over to the dugout, and at that time, this was the early 80s. Uh, he was probably 85 years old at that time. He's passed away now. But uh, I sat down, started talking to him, and he looked over at me, and he said, Johnny, you know what I love the most about this game? And I said, no, what, Coach? He said, every single day I come to the ballpark, I learn something new. I said, you got to be, I said, you, you've been in this game for over 70 years and you're still learning? He said, I'm still learning. I said, well, that's great because I want to learn as much as I possibly can too. But also, when we used to hang out around the ballpark, uh, we'd get there a little bit early. Sometimes uh, in the dugout here would be Nolan Ryan and I'd see our pitchers going up to him and just picking his brain. They'd say, how do you pitch to Steve Garvey with men on base? And then all of a sudden he'd answer that and another question would come up. I used to talk to Tony Gwynn quite a bit. Uh, Tony played with San Diego Padre. He won seven batting uh, titles. And I asked him, I said, Tony, what is your philosophy on this hitting? You, you, you've done so great in your career so far. He said, well, I, I, I try to hit everything to the opposite field. I said, well, why? He said, well, I, it keeps my bat in the hitting zone that much longer, and I can still pull the off-speed stuff. And it just made sense, and he just kept going on and on. I kept picking his brain, but I was gaining experience. And the same thing with Joe Morgan when he got traded to the uh, San Francisco Giants. I made our equipment manager put his uh, stuff in the locker next to mine, and the three years that I played with him, I probably gained 30 years of experience. But how does a Christian gain knowledge? Second uh, Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15 tells us to be diligent to study. Pick up the Bible and read it. I remember the first podcast that I did, I challenged everybody to read the Bible for 30 minutes a day, and it would change your life, and it still will. But think of the experience that you're going to gain if you do that. In Hebrews chapter 5, verses 12 through 14, it said that some had not matured, meaning that they had not gained any knowledge or experience because they hadn't been studied. They were on the milk of the Word like a little baby uh, still needing to have a bottle and being fed milk instead of getting our teeth and being able to eat meat and, and learn strong things and... and uh, the, the things that God wanted us to learn as we mature as Christians. In Acts chapter 17, verses 10 and 11, these people were given one of the highest praises I've ever heard. The apostle Paul had been preaching to them in Berea, and uh, the writer of Acts here says that the Bereans were more noble-minded than those in Thessalonica because they went home at night and studied the Word to see if the things that the Apostle Paul was saying was true or not. That's noble-mindedness right there. And what I'm saying here too, I don't, even want, I don't want you to believe me in anything that I say uh, because I want you to open your Bible and see if the things that I'm telling you is true or not. But what about those people in Thessalonica? Paul, uh, Paul was preaching to them, but they, they went home and studied the Old Testament scriptures to see if what was Paul was saying was true or not. But evidently, the people in Thessalonica weren't doing that. So they weren't growing in experience. They weren't growing in knowledge. But the Bereans were. Let's be like the Bereans as much as we possibly can. Why should a Christian study and grow? Romans 10, verse 17, it tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. How is our faith going to grow? 
And it says by hearing the word of God. We don't want to have, we do want to have our own faith. We don't want to have the faith of our mother or our father or our preacher. We don't want to have the faith of Johnny LeMaster. The only way you're going to have your own true faith is to pick up the Bible and study it and see what it says. And in 1 Corinthians 10, 12, we need to be ready because there's a possibility that we can fall. So even though that we become a Christian, there's always that possibility that we can go back into the world. But if we stay strong and gain that experience and that knowledge, we're going to know what to do when those type of temptations come toward us. How are some of the ways that we can gain knowledge? Uh, in classrooms, in sermons. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 and 24 tells us not to forsake the assembly. Uh, in Acts chapter 17, verses 10 and 11, again, individual study, like the Bereans, searching the scriptures. And in Titus chapter 2, verses 4 and 5, listening to older people, listening to people that has the experience. That's how I picked up a lot of knowledge in baseball. But here's the one thing that we need to do. If we can put this one in there, we're going to gain experience. If we can follow the great shepherd, if we can follow the great physician, if we can look at the King of kings and the Lord of lords and implement the life that he lived and the sayings that he wants us to do and study and try to pick Jesus' brain. And how do we pick his brain? In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, be diligent to study. Let's be like the King of Kings. Thank you again with being with a shortstop with a shortstop.